Today we are in conversation with Professor Rajiv Malhotra, a faculty member at the Jindal School of Government and Public Policy. Professor Malhotra is the lead author of the Indian Public Policy Report and was the author of a UN bestseller on human rights which sold more than 100,000 copies. He's been a civil servant for over 28 years and was even the economic advisor to the Union Finance Minister. Welcome, Professor Malhotra. India's economic growth as on date, Professor Malhotra, has reached a historic low. In fact, it is the worst GDP growth performance since 1947. And the slip to minus 29% uh, growth rate in the first quarter of 2020 can be attributed to the virus-induced lockdown, but we know that growth has been consistently slipping for the last you know, number of quarters. Now, let me start by asking you this, Professor Madhotra. Do you think there has been an insufficient fiscal stimulus from the government to cushion the adverse impact of the pandemic? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the starting point uh, on, uh, as my response to this question is, it's not just the magnitude of the fiscal uh, uh, stimulus which matters, it is how it is composed and being implemented. Now, in this case, if you look at the figures, we gave a fiscal stimulus uh, attributed to the response of the government for the COVID management, which was of the size of about 10% of GDP, uh, give and take a few uh, uh, decimal points here and there. Uh, it was 10% of the GDP, which was among the bigger stimuluses, uh, stimuli administered anywhere in the world. Right. But a large chunk of the stimulus went into addressing the liquidity situation. Now, what is the liquidity situation? Uh, as the COVID pandemic uh, induced shutdown started globally, a lot of money went back out of India. Not, not a lot of hard currency money, the FDI, the FII funds which had come into the country, went out of the country. Now, when money flows, when dollars flow out of the country, uh, the supply of money in circulation in the economy reduces. So the first bit of the stimulus had to uh, bring the liquidity uh, back into the system. And so a large part of the stimulus, uh, which was administered 10% of the GDP, went into uh, uh, getting the liquidity in the economy back at the level where it should be. So, so, so the point is that the other part of the fiscal, which is what you and I would be looking at, which is stimulating aggregate demand, mm -hmm. which allows uh, uh, purchases to happen and uh, the percolation of uh, higher sales going into the supply chain and production chains, hasn't happened to that extent because the stimulus did not address that sufficiently. Right. So that needs to be kept in mind when we are looking at these numbers about the size of the fiscal stimulus and why is it not uh, uh, getting the kind of response that it uh, should have right. got. So Professor Malhotra, you, you were speaking about liquidity and it just seems that due to this lockdown and due to you know um, the effect that the pandemic has had on our economy, do you think that the, um, the gap of social inequality, which was always there in India, do you think that has widened significantly over the lockdown? So my response would be uh, most certainly. Uh, uh, but uh, in the absence of uh, concrete data, which unfortunately uh, for the last few years has not been released on a timely basis, it's very difficult to pinpoint uh, how, how bad the situation is. But to look at it in terms of uh, the reasoning, you see, uh, we have a very segmented labor market where 90% of our employment is in the informal sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is the uh, employment uh, which does not have social security coverage or not adequate social uh, security coverage. In a situation where growth uh, impacts, this is the sector which gets hit the most. And uh, given the historical inequality, plus the fact that over the last six, seven years, our growth trajectory has not been where it should have been given the experience we had in the first decade of this millennium. So uh, by uh, anecdotal evidence, by, by whatever evidence is available, there's every reason to believe that inequality uh, in 
outcomes mm -hmm. as well as opportunities have uh, should have increased or deteriorated significantly during right. this period. Well, let's talk about data. Now, according to the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, about 6.6 .6 million white collar jobs, not in the informal sector, white collar jobs were lost between May and August 2020. Now, in this is undoubtedly a crisis. What do you think that the Indian government should be doing to mitigate this crisis that we have? So I mentioned earlier that one part of the response was to uh, get the liquidity back in the system. So that I think has been addressed with the big stimulus that was announced, which I mentioned was about 10% of GDP. But the other part of the stimulus is uh, still uh, there. It, mm -hmm. uh, one needs that stimulus, which is to uh, uh, stimulate aggregate demand and especially uh, increase consumption spending. Because that will have the consequence of creating production to get back on steam and to re-employ people who have been laid off just mm. because there's no uh, demand in the economy. Right. Uh, so that element is still missing and that is what I think the government should be focusing right. if it has to get out of this crisis. Right. Do you think it's time for India to introduce a universal income? Uh, universal basic income. I am not in favor of that at mm -hmm. this juncture. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it is a alternative i think a society needs to consider after a certain level of development we are at a stage where nearly 50% of our population is still dependent on agriculture which are basically low productivity jobs we need to get them out of that first skill them and uh, make them capable enough to uh, live and be ready for a gig economy experience, mm. which is which is what uh, universal basic income uh, 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 is seen in light of. So, uh, our population is not ready for that. We need to create them nine to good nine to five jobs, and these jobs have to be in the non-farm sector. Right. So, our transition, the state of our transition. Uh, is not, in my view, ready to have a universal basic income. And there's another factor for that. The kind of resources uh, that such a program would require uh, would either need a huge rationalization of government expenditure as it is being undertaken now, or finding some 10% of GDP right. uh, from somewhere, which is not going it's to be easy. Possible. So I'm not in favor of a, a universal basic income initiative at this juncture. 20 years later or 30 years later, given the transition that we had, uh, we, we would have done if things go right or nearly right, uh, perhaps that would be the time to take care of it. Right. right now, we need to have normal nine to five jobs where new skills are uh, imparted to the population, which then prepares them for the kind of future that the labor market is going to see, right. not only in India, but the world. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Rajiv. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, Thank you for your insightful comments on the state of India's economy and where we should be going from here on end. Do continue watching this space for more expert opinions from faculty members at the OP Jindal Global University. This has been Conversations at JGU.